Greetings and salutations. This is Derek Breen, and I'm here to present teacher training for i2 Learning's digital game design from scratch. I'm the developer of the curriculum, and if you're watching this video, chances are it's because you either missed training or you have had a long time pass between when you attended my teacher training and when you're actually getting ready to present the course. So these videos should walk you through all the major parts of the course with a particular emphasis on the projects where students will be building games and then expanding those games and gradually increasing their knowledge towards designing and developing their own video game. The ultimate goal for this course is for each student to have their own fun game by the end of the week. So there'll be a student showcase where many people will be playing their games, and hopefully each game will be engaging for the person playing so that they'll want to continue playing and also encourage that student to continue their work as a fledgling game designer, combining digital design skills with computer programming. To get started with Scratch, you'll either use the online version or the offline version. You can find the online version of Scratch by going to scratch.mit.edu. Scratch works best in Google Chrome because Chrome automatically updates the Flash plugin, which is required for Scratch to, Scratch to run properly. You can run it on any modern Chromebook. A Chromebook within the past few years should do a really good job running Scratch. You can also run it in other browsers. You just need to make sure that you have the most up-to-date version of the Flash plugin. If you want to run Scratch offline, and I also recommend that it's a good idea to have the offline version installed on school computers in the chance that there's an outage or problems with internet access or Wi-Fi that prevent students from being able to use Scratch, go to scratch.mit.edu slash scratch to download. You'll need to download and install Adobe Air first and see they have it for all modern operating systems then download and install the offline editor. There are also some support materials that you could check out including starter projects, a quick guide for getting started with Scratch, and basic Scratch cards. These are different from the game design Scratch cards that are distributed by i2Camp. These ones are really bare bones for younger students, but you still might find those useful. I'm going to be using the offline version of Scratch, Scratch 2.0, because it allows me to take advantage of more of my screen, but I'll also do my best to point out the differences between the offline and the online version. So please now go to the next video, which will get you started with the first mini game design challenge. The course is structured so that there are three mini games in three different genres, a sports game, a maze game, and a scrolling shooter game. Students will create basic versions of these games on the first day, improve them on the second day, and on the third day they'll mash them together in the hopes of more creative thinking around how to do game design. Notice when I open the Scratch 2 offline editor, it's asking me to update Adobe Air. I am not going to update for the same reason I wouldn't update if this happened midweek. I don't want to take the chance that Adobe messes anything up about Scratch. So as long as Scratch is working, I want to stick with the version of Scratch that's working for me right now, at least until the end of this instructional week. So for those three mini games, we're going to start with Ball Game 1, and each game is set up as a series of challenges. You're challenging the student to add new functionality to their game, and then if they have trouble meeting that challenge, on a student-by-student -student basis, you can offer individual help. Or they can get help from their peers on either side if they progress past them. The idea is if the students can discover things on their own, it makes learning a bit more fun and also makes the learning a bit more permanent. So I'm going to stop this screencast and encourage you to go right on to the next video, which is Ball Game 1.